Today is the tale of Stolen Thunder. Welcome back Troglodytes to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Here's another one that David New Guitar Dade with me, and it's a Guitar Center exclusive model that was really cool when it first came out, but then Gibson upshowed it after a couple of months. So let's go ahead and talk about this unique limited edition. At launch, these were introduced at $2,000. So it was a $200 upcharge as compared to a regular SG standard. And what did you get for that price? A really cool silver metallic finish on just regular spec SG otherwise. That's pretty cool. However, after about four months, Gibson came out with a new custom color series of SGs. Now we've talked about those in a few episodes. Those colors included a Pelham Blue Burst, Cardinal Red Burst, classic white, silver mist, TV yellow, and a really awesome translucent teal. And they offered it on both the SG Standard, which has the Batwing pick guard style for $17.99, and the Half Guard 61 SG. Those ones a little bit more expensive, $1,999. Now the biggest difference between those two models and why there's a $200 price difference comes down to your neck profile, what pickups they loaded it with, and the pick guard style, and some of the other fine stylings that the guitars have. So poor little Guitar Center exclusive guitar is now looking too $200 more expensive than all the other custom colors. I mean, I guess you could make the argument. I think this one has a little bit more of a metallic-y finish to it than the other ones. But my friends, there is one saving grace to these if you're considering it and you're like, hey, why is this one more expensive? It's because it has a true ebony fretboard. All the other ones have rosewood. So is it still worth paying a $200 premium for that? I think many people would say yes. I've reviewed both models and this one just feels a little bit different. Like this is a really cool modernized color. But if you're not familiar with Silver Burst, it was first prototyped in the year 1977 and was used on Les Paul Customs. Now recently we've had the Adam Jones hype with all the hundred million different iterations of his Les Paul, but finding a Silver Burst SG, you don't find this too often, but Guitar Center has been known for doing these exclusive runs. And that's another thing you could consider. This one's technically a limited edition. Now they're gonna make a lot of them and I don't think they're going to discontinue them anytime soon, but Guitar Center limited editions do have a decent tendency to become collectible in the future if they're cool and extra unique. And that ebony fretboard might be the same grace on top of it being silver burst whereas the limited color series seems like it'll be in production a little bit longer make your own decision if you want one but it still comes with the same soft case so it's not like hey this one's a little bit more but you get the hard case now same stuff pickups are exact same 490r 490t it really just comes down to finish and fretboard so let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to take a qc report and look at its parts and specs and unfortunately i'm already seeing a lot of bad stuff on this example but we'll power through it together. Inside our Silver Burst friend, here's what it looks like with our pick guard removed. You can see it's routed just for two humbuckers. You've got your extended tenon into your neck pickup cavity. And these pickups are on a quick connect system and to get them out this far, I had to unplug them. But there we go, visual confirmation of the 490R in the neck and the 490T in the bridge. You always gotta check that on Guitar Center exclusives because occasionally they copy and paste like the original spec sheet and then they don't get something that's special on them. As far as those readings within the circuit, the middle for fun is 3.92, bridge position 7.96k ohms, and then the neck 7.73. As far as the bridge and tailpiece, it is a regular Nashville style. That's another difference between this and the 61. Those ones get the faux BR one, but this one's API branded. And lightweight aluminum, as is our tailpiece. Same company. And our controls are very basic, two volumes, two tones, no coil splitting or anything modern like that. Output jack on the front, three-way toggle switch. Now, if you're ordering one of these blind, what surprised me the first time I saw this was the fact that this has an open pour finish. So you can see that underneath the silver burst. You don't find that on all silver bursts. So if you were expecting this to look the same as like a Les Paul Custom that has the maple top, no, you're going to be disappointed. And sometimes like the finish gets bunched up in certain areas, so it looks darker in some of the pours. Just know to expect that on all of these, some sort of a variation in the wood grain that you can still see. Personally, I could go either way. I just thought these were complete flat finish, we wouldn't see that. I could see how some people would love that effect, and I could see how some people would not like it. So just a fair warning here. Now let's talk about the neck. It's a rounded mahogany with the ebony fretboard, and Gibsons are well known for having tooling marks on their fretboard. This example was pretty bad. 
Here's some photos. There's like a deep gouge here by the third fret. Excessive marks pretty much all over. You can see a little bit of fret sprouting. There's even some areas where you can see that light finish check by the binding indicating a humidity issue. This thing was pretty bad. In my opinion, that is over the top and probably shouldn't have been sent out on a factory first. Next, we got to look at our nut. We have an outline around it. Now, am I scared that that's, you know, got damaged in transit or something? Because if you look, the line does extend. No, this is strictly cosmetic and it will happen eventually, but it should not be there brand new. This is another indication of not being properly stored. That line stemming from it is actually where the fretboard ends and joins onto the body. Now, if that is diagonal or jagged, that's how you know it got damaged in transit. This one, in my opinion, it's nothing. We've got the same thing right by the heel joint area. Do lines occur there eventually? Yep. However, again, brand new. Shouldn't be there quite yet. Rant aside, let's look at our neck specs. 1.68 inches at the nut, 210 by the 12th. 0.82 first fret neck depth, increasing to 0.95 by the 12th. Here's a look at that neck profile, first fret, 12th fret. You can see it gets a little bit of a flat spot as you go up. That's not overly noticeable. You've got lots of shoulder. Honestly, it doesn't seem as big as that teal SG that we had reviewed not that long ago, but it's definitely rounded territory with a 12 inch fretboard radius and 24 three quarter inch scale. We've got our Gibson Mother of Pearl logo as well as our crown and the truss rod cover itself reads SG and all is looking good there. But right here at the face of the headstock, this caught my attention right away. It had like this dull spot where sometimes it would look okay, but if you get it in the light, you can see it just wasn't right. So I thought, ah, maybe this dinged up against something and chipped the clear coat, or maybe it was just a scuff and I could polish it out. So I took my cleaner and looky here, somebody thought they could hide that by putting like a black touch up pen or something on it. And what that is, is it's a headstock delamination of the lacquer. Someone's got some splaining to do on that one. You can also see that phenomenon happening over here on the side of the headstock and an even more extreme case right here, but that's covered over by your truss rod cover. So it's not as big of a deal. So needless to say, uh, QC on this particular one and storage happens to be an issue. Now, is it Gibson or Guitar Center's fault? I think it might be a slight combination of the two. But this is easily one of the worst fine detail guitars that we've reviewed in a while. Moving on to the backside, these are just completely black. I think it would have been cool had they gave it a silver back, just to make it different, but you could say this harkens back to the initial reissue of the Silver Burst in the early 2000s. It was Sam Ash who first did those. We've got the Gibson branded pots loaded on a PCB system, just like the other ones within the custom color series, with our large strap buttons in the usual locations. Besides the typical black finishes are hard to look perfect because they show polishing scratches and swirls, I didn't notice anything too out of the ordinary here. And I suppose it is worth mentioning that I specifically ordered one that was not a floor model and they said it was unboxed. I I'm not sure if they sent me the right one to be honest. Because this looks like a, a really clean floor model that was just hung up high that only a few people got to play. Moving up the back side of the neck, nothing too much to take a look at here until we get to our chrome Grover tuners. And it does have a serial number dating it to 2023, 213th day of the year, initial batch, production number 124, made in USA. But put back together, this one weighs seven pounds, 5.5 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds. <laughs> Liking those pickups again.
So there we go, the Guitar Center exclusive Silver Burst SG Standard. I'm still shocked just how good these regular SG standards are. I just completely ignored them for years thinking, eh, it's just regular production. You can normally only find them in cherry, but now that they came in so many new flavors, it's like, yeah, I want to try one. And then I realized what I'm missing out on. I love their chunky necks. Personally, I really dig the ebony fretboard on this one. So if you have similar thoughts and opinions and you don't mind the silver burst color and you can find a good one, definitely go for it. To me, that's the biggest selling feature that I don't think they emphasize enough. And I'm glad they changed it up otherwise these just would have been left in the dust being more expensive and having nothing necessarily unique to them they future proof themselves because they had to have known those custom color series were coming as a gibson dealer and usually i look down upon the whole 490r 490t but they work really well in these guitars so try one if you see it if you specifically want the silver burst one maybe go into the shop see if it has the quality that you're looking for because it seems ordering these online might be a little bit of a crapshoot. But if you can find a good one, I think you will be happy with it. Unfortunately, uh, this one isn't the one for David, so it's going to be sent back. But I hope you enjoy your newfound guitar knowledge. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.